Well, the double standard clear as day. The liberal media suddenly up in arms over the border crisis, but only after Texas Governor Greg Abbott again dropped busloads of illegal immigrants outside the vice president's home. This time it was on Christmas Eve. Interesting that those same outlets didn't seem to care much about the thousands of migrants who slept on the frigid streets of El Paso into Christmas morning. The situation there continuing to get worse and with Supreme Court to set to decide the fate of Title 42, maybe in the next 24 hours, overrun El Paso is preparing for the worst. Border Patrol there set up a massive tent city just outside downtown ahead of the expected surge. The New York Post covered this morning calling it a welcome mat for illegal immigration. You know, Katrina, I think it's interesting that the media, the left wing liberal media anyway, is deciding what's a story and what isn't. So migrants freezing in El Paso, not a story. Migrants freezing in D.C., that's a story. By the way, they were picked up almost immediately by social workers and taken to a church, and they're warm. But it's just the, the hypocrisy of all of it. It doesn't hit them until it hits them at home, you know, pun intended. intended. And remember when DeSantis did this, where he shipped them, and then finally all of a sudden the media is paying attention. And it's so sad because this has been an issue, but there's no solution yet. And the media only covers it when they're actually shipped to the president or vice president's home. Yeah. No. And, you know, Michelle, I mean, this this lack of focus, I think, is interesting because it's also so slanted. You know, I mean, 8,500, I think, migrants have come to New York City yeah. about, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. How about 200,000 into Texas? These, you know, the, we're, the numbers don't add up. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. Mary, Mary Adams here in New York. <gasps> Migrants are arriving. Yes, and Those record numbers. No one's paying attention to the southern border. And, and it is. The hypocrisy is, is ridiculous. I remember when they took them to Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was Governor DeSantis. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Internet went wild. And there was Twitter and Facebook. And how cruel, how awful, yes, so cruel to go to Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> you know, just, but you're right. AOC, when Trump was in office, was down there crying about the conditions of the people in these shelters at the border. Now the border shelters are being overrun. Babies are dying en route to the United States. Mm -hmm. Women are being raped. Stuff is going on at record numbers. Where's AOC? And mm -hmm. where's the press, like you said, at the border? But instead, they wait until it hits somewhere that maybe is more meaningful to people? I, I, I'm not sure why that's right. And either way, Jeanette, it is a, it's a human tragedy. It Whether is. it's happening in Washington or New York or Chicago or in Texas, where the, that's the real tragedy, yeah. tra excuse me, tragedy Absolutely. to Michelle's point. Absolutely. And, and uh, to Michelle's point, what's cruel and awful is incentivizing and encouraging illegal immigration. I mean, when you look, when you think about it, it's a very dangerous trek from beginning, even when they enter the United States. I've had patients when I work in the here in Times Square, the, they would come in through the Port Authority. I had a patient come in; um, he was stabbed in the stomach. And I said to him, why didn't you seek medical attention, 911, go to the hospital? And he told me through a translator, he was afraid of being deported. So when they come through the border, like you said, women and children raped, their sex trafficking. Then the drugs, cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines coming in, Fentanyl. killing, causing Fentanyl. overdoses. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Fentanyl is a huge one. And then, you know, you think about it, this past quarter, 577,000 border encounters. And how many of them could have been terrorists entering? Only 200,000 of them were deported because of Title 42. But 400,000 of them remained in the United States, released into the United States. That is scary. And you know, what's interesting, Dr. Siegel, as well, is that, you know, if you look at the Biden administration's handling of this, it's been a lot of gaslighting, let's be clear here, from the administration. Now, because of what happened at Harris's home over the weekend, it's a big story. <laughs> but, you know, Breitbart reported that now that, that uh, the Biden administration is not going to let the CBP release those numbers. That's what we've been reporting and showing to our viewers here at Fox. Here's the real numbers. Here's the real story, whether everybody else wants to ignore it or not. Now the, the administration wants to stop those. Stop Very those scary. That's a gag out. rule. And what it's going to yeah. do is prevent different uh, stations from sharing information. Detention centers, that can impact public health. Dr. Nishawat is absolutely right that the, the trauma of people coming across injuries are the number one reason that the hospitals on the border are being flooded. And if Title 42 is pulled back, which, by the way, simply gives the CDC director the right 
to stop entry into the United States for public health reasons in the middle of what the Biden administration is still calling a public health emergency because of COVID. So there's an inconsistency here. It's going to double the number of people coming across the border. will be 13,000 a day. And my sources tell me down in El Paso, physicians at McAllen Hospital, guess what? They're not ready in a million years for the number of patients they're going to have from contagions, from infectious diseases, from trauma, from dehydration, from water that's contaminated. All of this is an enormous mess, and that, not to mention, and Dr. Robert Redfield told me this, former CDC director, the concern for the Custom and Border Protection agents themselves. Right. Yeah. 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 To your point, Michelle, we've seen higher rates of suicide, alcoholism. There are, there, there's a mental health crisis going on with those border, border agents down in Texas. And, and let's, be, let's go back here. President Biden, he went to Arizona recently, <laughs> but couldn't be bothered to hop in his helicopter for, what, a 45-minute flight down to the border? Oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. They There's are, no crisis at the border. Better things to do. They're so afraid no, of the optics of him standing there looking at this damage. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they're they're afraid of. But for him to say there are more important things Thanks. to do, and imagine this: the hypocrisy of putting a gag order on the numbers that uh, for CBP. Imagine four years ago, if the Trump White House had put had put the kibosh on releasing numbers of death or infected of COVID. Imagine the uproar there would be. Wow. But there doesn't seem to be an uproar here about. You know, let's not tell people how many people are crossing the border. You know, and Jeanette, something you said, I mean, I'm worried about with this massive density that they're building in El Paso. Now I'm thinking about the safety of these migrants. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that, 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 that is concerning. And, That's a good and, point. And what they're doing is they're preparing for more immigrants instead of coming up with solutions right. to stop them from coming across the border. I think, and, and maybe Dr. Siegel would agree with me, Keep Title 42 in place, but yes. expand it to include HIV, tuberculosis, hepatitis, and in addition to Title 8. I mean, because we're, otherwise we're just putting a Band-Aid on, you know, a, a very hemorrhag hemorrhagic solution that's um, really not going to work in the long run. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. By the way, if you try to come here legally... They screen you yeah. for everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's what I don't get, Katrina, because you and I travel a lot for our yeah. shows on Fox Business, right? Yeah. You know, if, if I go in and out of the country, you know, I've got a you know, passport and global and all that, you know, but if I want to come over the southern border, uh, walk on across. Yeah, and but traveling. If you fly to the country, you can't get through. You and I travel a lot for yeah. our shows on Fox yeah. Business, you know, Mansion Global and so forth, and it's crazy the restrictions that we have. We have to be tested for this, you have yeah. to have this vaccine, you have to have this, and yet people are coming over the border, you know, and it's just, and I know so many people that are personally risking their lives because they want to give their children a better future here in the United States, which I understand, you but do that. it legally. You know, my parents came here at a very young age, you know, they were seven years old from Cuba, but they did it the right way, and so I'm all about the American dream, but about following the rules. Well, yes. George W. Bush had a plan for immigration. He just never got it over the goal line, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But he, you know, former Texas governor, then president, says we need to have a path for citizenship, the right path, the right the safe path. Exactly. And, you know, here we are today still dealing with this crisis. So. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.